Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. I haven't published an episode in quite some time and boy am I happy to be back. Now, I've been hard at work preparing content and a few special projects that I will be announcing over the next few days and weeks. Um, as I've mentioned before, there's a lot of research that goes into this content and I've been spending quite some time exploring rabbit holes recently and I'm very excited to share all of this with you. Now, today's episode is going to be about two-factor authentication, but how it has to be implemented at the provider side of things, not at the consumer side of things, which is us. Uh, I actually talked about 2FA in two previous episodes. I'll link them in the description. I would recommend watching those before watching today's episode. Today's episode is really focused on how we as companies should implement 2FA to help our users be safe. I have so many things to share about 2FA. I'll try to restrain myself to not just go overboard and, and batch you crazy about this, but so many companies implement 2FA in very, very poor ways. Um, for instance, Twilio, a voice over IP app. I talked about Twilio in the context of how to set up a signal account without you know, revealing one's own phone number. Well, they have 2FA, which is pretty much an industry standard by now. But in order to activate 2FA, it can be done through SMS, which is very bad. It can be done through Authy, and it can be done through a third-party uh, two-factor authentication app that uses the Google Authenticator standard, which is essentially t uh, TOTP, so time-based, one-time passwords. I am a huge fan of TOTP. So I was super excited when Twilio allowed its users to set up 2FA using a third-party app and an open source protocol. Authy is probably secure, but is it's a proprietary uh, product that is actually owned by Twilio itself. Um, so I was super excited to enable that on a third-party app. And I discovered that even if we do so, when we log in, it will let us know, hey, if you don't have access to your secure two-factor authentication app, click here and we'll send you a token by SMS. Oh, and most people, most companies are implementing two-factor authentication that way. I understand why. It's a really fascinating problem to solve. How can you secure an account while still allowing for human error? People humans, we tend to forget our passwords or lose our phones or mess up backups. And, and everyone, including myself, we, we're, we're all part of that. We're all human. But from a security and privacy standpoint, if you protect an account using an app or a YubiKey, for instance, not sure if this will focus, the whole purpose of that is to bring our security to another level. It's because we don't trust SMS two-factor authentication in the first place because you know what? S SIM swap attacks are prevalent. It's something that I see all the time. I mean, I have clients that were victim of such attacks. So the reason for, the, for not wanting SMS is we don't want SMS. So then when we enable a third-party app on Twilio, they still allow us to roll back to SMS. That really blows my mind. Now, that being said, a lot of providers will do this. Google will let me log in using YouTube, even though I set up a secure 2FA system. I mean, it blows my mind. Now, I understand why those companies are doing this, because their legal departments are probably like, whoa, you know, we don't want to lock out users from our systems. They would be super pissed off. And I understand that. I actually feel their, their, their reflection. I, I, I would think about that myself, but how can, can 2FA be implemented securely? Now, the reason why this content is being shared today when I have a few other episodes in the pipeline is, remember a while back when I was talking about 1984 and Nyala, two privacy conscious hosting providers. Unfortunately, 1984 only supports something called Ubico OTP, so Ubico one-time password. And I remember mentioning, if my memory is good, uh, that Nyala had implemented TOTP 2FA, which is great. And 1984 had implemented OTP 
uh, which is essentially Yubico's, uh, not proprietary, because I think this, it's an open source standard, but Yubico's OTP protocol. And that protocol has two very critical problems. Number one is you cannot back it up. It's really designed for larger organizations that have system administrators that issue the keys to employees. And if an employee has lost their key, they can just go knock on the door and say, hey, I need another key. Uh, the, that's the number one problem is you cannot back it up because you don't have access to the hash material. Uh, that's a little uh, nerdy, but essentially to TLTP, which is time-based one-time passwords, the way that works is you have a hash that is provided by the provider and you have the current time, which is pretty universal. And both of them are combined uh, cryptographically to generate a six digit token. So the hash itself can be backed up. I'll explain how to do this, by the way, in a future episode. If you're down to learn more about that, smash the subscribe button and we'll get there. So back to 1984, they had implemented Yubico OTP. So it, you cannot back it up. And the second problem, which is a privacy problem, is the way OTP works, the first piece of whatever the key is providing to a supplier is a unique identifier of the key and it is shared among multiple providers. So that's actually a way of potentially leaking our identity. So that made it a really bad option that I never enabled. I actually disabled OTP from the YubiKey that I use. Again, more on YubiKeys in the future. They're really, really nice devices. So. I was not so happy, but still very, uh, very happy with 1984. So I reached out and I suggested that they should implement TOTP and that it would make me so very happy. And I am very excited to share with you today that they have. 1984 now supports both OTP and TOTP protocols. And that is such a great such a great addition to what they have uh, in place as a dashboard, which is already great. By the way, this is not a sponsored episode in no way. If ever I do sponsored episodes one day, I'll write it in huge, huge letters in pink to disclose it to you guys. Um, yeah, so all of that said, I wanna spend a little bit of time with you guys just bouncing ideas about how providers or companies should implement 2FA at their ends. What policy should be in place when a user loses their password and or their uh, tokens or their hashes. How can those users recover their accounts if we even want those accounts to be recoverable? Now, I know Signal has a system in place where if you lose your PIN, goodbye. You lose access to your Signal account. You have to reinitiate it and uh, that actually breaks all of the verified connections you had with different users. So you have to kind of start over. Um, I really love that. I, I'm really comfortable with this. Uh, I think that there should be features uh, on privacy conscious apps or privacy conscious providers to allow users to sign up, sign in or, or sign up for you know, losing their account if ever they lose all of their recovery material. I think that that should be a feature. What do you guys think? Let me know in, in the comments. Um, it could be a feature that you have to enable that is very, you know, uh, what, what's the word for this? That, that, you know, it shouts that if you lose all your stuff, you're, you know, you get, get the idea. Um, but what are, the, what are other ways? What are maybe less brutal ways? Uh, the way Niala handles this is quite ingenious they force their users to upload a PGP public key to their account before enabling 2FA. That means that if ever they lose their phones, uh, for instance, and they were using only their phones with no backups, which is bad in the first place, but if ever that happens, uh, well, they probably have their PGP private keys backed up somewhere and they could open an email that includes recovery material. That is actually really cool, although I have to admit it's kind of nerdy. Um, now, what other systems exist? Uh, do you have ideas? Let me know in the comments. I mean, I'm, I'm just reflecting on this because I might be implementing 2FA for one of my technologies one day. Um, and I would love to share those ideas with the people at 1984. How can an account be recovered without relying on SMS or email or potentially anything that could be compromised because 2FA is their 
so that if your computer is compromised, the attack window is very short, 60 seconds for an attacker to capture both password and 2FA token. So yeah. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. This is kind of like an open-ended episode. I'll be reflecting more on this in the future. Um, and yeah, stay tuned. Lots more coming. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.